Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Check out these next few episodes, The View, and allow yourself to be provoked and challenged. Are you seeing things from his point of view? And is that view becoming more and more your habitual way of seeing things? We don't want our past or anything else to constantly be exalting itself over the knowledge of God. We want to know Him, walk with Him, be made ready to go with Him, and we want it to be the true fight of our life, the fight of faith. Take hold of these next episodes, and I look forward to our journey together deeper in this way. Love you all. The View 3.0. Here we go. We left off last time out of 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, and I hope that there is a freshness that is coming to this very familiar passage of Scripture, that you understand that it is not God's desire for you to manage strongholds, but to see them destroyed so that He can become the stronghold of your life. And that whether you've been victimized in life or not, Uh, that you do not live in a state of being powerless. My friends, we're fully dependent upon him. The power doesn't come from us. The power is we are sharing in his life. And Jesus has sent the very same one that he leaned upon, Holy Spirit, to live inside of each of those who have been born again, that he would be your power. Holy Spirit is your power to live to war, to fight. So it doesn't all depend on you in that sense, but he does honor our ability to make decisions. That's why God will not violate your will. God does not act upon you. God calls you to choose him, and that's why he's revealing truth to you at new levels. So here we go, my friends. We look at this word refute, which means to prove wrong with evidence. This is so powerful because as you allow him to love you, you will have evidence, my friends. Now, the word of God is clear that we have been loved by God. It is in there again and again and again. And you might want to go and just limit yourself in the New Testament to some of the places where it talks about his great love for you, his great jealousy for you. James 4, verse 5. The guys said in 1 John 4, you know, we have come to know this love that he cherishes for us. I'm of the belief that's why they lived the way they did. His love is spoken of is that you were chosen out in Christ, in love, before the foundations of the world. Remember, that's a part of our view as we see things from his point of view. So you will be able to prove lies wrong with evidence and prove and bring down and destroy strongholds when the igniting of that metanoia comes into you, that striking change in the way that you see things and therefore you begin to download from spirit into soul the truth. And we're going to talk about that just here in a minute. I'm going to give you just a very simple way. of of being able to do that, not as a formula. I refuse formulas. Fellowship, my friends, is what will bring to you the freshness of life. Fellowship with him. He will speak to you. He will make real in your experience, an experiential way of living. He will make that real if you stay with him. Don't run off, my friends. Abide, remain, continue. So we refute Every, all right, now catch this. (laughs) It's like, if we only do this occasionally, Mm -hmm. like the saying hit and miss, if you only do it hit and miss, you get hit and miss results. But when you come into that place to realize, wait a minute, I'm going to hear from him. I am going to know the truth. I'm going to see things from his point of view. Therefore, I'll be able to think like him and be able to walk with him. And he'll be able to find a path straight through me as he and I live as one. He'll be able to live through me 
with my full cooperation, and you'll be a glad-hearted son. Oh, this is going to be magnificent. A company of glad-hearted and jealous sons who are jealous for the father. See, the father's jealous for you. He wants only you. And he says, have no other gods before me. And we, in response, out of our life with him, we are jealous for him. So out of that, you see, there begins to be this awareness, right? That is, this isn't some occasional scripture that I'm quoting to myself. I am getting ready to take down arguments, theories, reasonings, proud and lofty things that are set against my father. So how many of those? Every. <laughs> when I first uh, experienced this, I thought, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go to bed. I mean, I'm telling you, my friends, it was a full-time job renewing, quote, renewing my mind. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to have to go to bed at 6.30 at night. Just give me a little dinner. I'm, I'm done for the day. This is quite a warfare. And yes, it is. And we need to talk about that. And we need to acknowledge that. Because I ask people, well, how, how often has the lie been coming to you? Did the lie come to you once or twice? No, it's pummeled you every day. We allowed that. We tolerated that, didn't we? It became a constant companion. So there comes a place where, as metanoia, this gift of deep, striking repentance, where it's not just I feel bad for what I've done, but I am, and I'm going to use strong language here, I am horrified at what I've been thinking and tolerating and indulging over the years. Now, because I see truth, Right? I, I, I don't just say, oh, I know I shouldn't think like that. No, no, no. Now I've seen him. I know him. I'm listening to him. And when that happens, I realize the thoughts that have been coming against him and who he is to me and who I am to him. No more. No more. See, it's a striking work. Now, that doesn't mean that every single thought is going to be eradicated in one season of your life. But I guarantee you this. He is going to choose the stronghold that is fighting him right now. And he's going to begin to expose it to you right now. And I pray that you'll have a seat at his table that uh, maybe you'll join me at um, some of the things I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to do one called The Vault, February 9th. And uh, there are other things uh, such as Cross Encounter which will happen uh, out here in Sealy, uh, in the area where I live, um, February 29th, March 1 and 2. You can catch some of that information on my social media. My friends, there are things that you can begin to do, atmosphere that you can put yourself in to hear the truth. There's no magical event, right? There's no guru person, but you can be in an atmosphere where you will be provoked, where you will hear truth, where you will see there are others headed this way. But then remember, ultimately, it's you and Holy Spirit fighting the real inner fight of your life. But you must have the view to be able to see from. So in this season, as he begins to expose a particular stronghold of thought, how often will you have to replace that lie with the truth is every time it comes. Now, you'll probably ramp up a little bit and you'll catch it here and there. And then the more that you respond to him and you walk with him, um, that will become more and more. You will not tolerate these things. And you will find when Holy Spirit is leading the process, you will find that's an amazing, amazing place and an amazing way to conduct this warfare. And so I encourage you in that. We refute every thought that's exalting itself above our Father. Now, here's a very, um, very simple way. So what would you do to be able maybe to just begin a simple, simple process? Okay, well, here we go. This is not a formula. Did I say that before? Let me say it again. This is not a formula. This comes out of deep fellowship with him. But process has a way of moving forward. So here we go. When you become aware of a lofty thought, meaning a lie, a uh, enemy philosophy, reasonings that are born out of something other than 
the word himself, then write it down. Write it down. You know, note cards are a beautiful thing. And I guarantee you right now, there must be 20 white three by five note cards scattered across my desk as I'm recording this, because I write down many things during the day. They're messy. Nobody understands them but me. And later on at the end of the day, when I pick all those cards up, I'm able to put them, you know, in certain categories. It's a part of the way that I keep my thoughts right on many different things that I'm doing and projects and things he might be speaking to me that I need to go and take a look at a little deeper when I have more time. But when you become aware of a lofty thought, something as simple as I'm not sure that God is for me, that is a lie. That is a part of an enemy philosophy. Uh, that is something definitely exalting itself above the knowledge of God. Write it down. Then take time with him to allow conversations between you and him about what he wants to tell you about that. He will reveal truth to you like no one else can. Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. He will reveal the word to you. And when you feel the pressure of, I'm not going to know how to do this. I can't figure it all out. That's when you lean unto him and you say, Holy Spirit, you do this in me and for me as you were sent to do. And I'll let you. So number one was if you become aware of a lofty thought, a lie, as he is revealing it to you and exposing it to you. It's a view that's not of him. Write it down. Then take time with him to allow conversations between you and him. Okay, because there are things he wants to tell you. Jesus told his disciples, there are conversations I'd like to have with you, but you're not ready yet. My friend, if you're listening to this episode, you're ready. There are things he wants to reveal to you. Next is take what he reveals to you by what he speaks to you and what he reveals in the word and meditate on it. I say this to myself quite often, and maybe you'll want to also, is meditate to articulate. Number one, when you become aware of this lie, this lofty, proud thought, this uh, argument, this prideful way of thinking, write it down. Number two, take time with him to allow conversations between you and him about what he wants to tell you, what he wants to show you, where he wants to reveal truth from his point of view. He's going to show you the truth. Then you're going to take that and you're going to meditate on it. You're going to think about that. And while you're doing that, Say to yourself, I meditate to articulate. That means the more I meditate on it, the more I'm going to start to speak it out. And I'm going to begin to speak it to my soul. Me, you, the new man, who I am. I will tell my soul, this is what is true. This is, this is what is true. And you download that into the soul there begins to be a renewing of the mind within the soul that's coming from pure water, the mind of Christ. Now, last point here. Each time that thought comes and dares to exalt itself above the knowledge of him, you will refute it with evidence. You will meet it with truth that is filled with the fire of his presence. And I pray that gradually more and more, yes, each time, every thought, each time, because then, my friends, rather than you habitually thinking according to the mind of the flesh and living in a view that is other than his, you will slowly but surely by the slow fire of his presence, you will habitually think like your father. He will be able to have a fit reception within you because you agree with him more and more. And the two of you will move as one. My friends, either there really is a way for him to bring revelation into reality or I don't know what we're doing. This is all, you know, just for naught, for nothing. So this isn't a formula. It's just a simple exercise to get you started moving in this direction to fight the true fight of faith, the fight of your life. And we will uh, continue. 
who knows? The next episodes may still be the view, or it may be a different um, aspect that's been brought up in these three episodes on the view, and we will then go deeper in. Because once you choose to, to move with him in this way, and you begin the process, the real fight of faith to believe him, you begin to truly do the inner work of the fight of your life, my friends, then that's a part of him building a certain kind of person who isn't going to tolerate the status quo in our day. And he begins then to bring you forward and you begin to live, my friends, as, as, a, as the person that you were made to be, first and foremost to him, to those immediately around you, and to your generation. So, your view, my friends, in view of the mercies of God, in view of the goodness of God, in view of the finished work of Jesus, in view of how things really are, the real truth, let's live unto him. Until next time, I love you all. Thank you for listening today. Before we go, I have one final ask and a new bit of info. If you like our content here at Tent Talk, Hit the share button to tell someone about it and subscribe at nancymccready.com forward slash podcast so you don't miss another episode. Also, be sure to look in the episode notes and see where you can download the conversation guide. There you will find questions and you will be able to use those with your friends, your team, your small group, and we hope that it really does provoke you deeper into your process of life with him. All of our podcasts here at Tent Talk are listener supported and your gifts at nancymccready.com are greatly appreciated. Thanks for joining me here and I look forward to our next time together. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccready.com or follow her on social media at nbmccready.com.